Hi, everybody. Thank you so much for coming here. Um, as she said, my name is Kavita, and I'm at Northwestern University. And today, I'm going to talk to you about a gold star for cancer research. This is my family. And I know who you're, you're wondering who that dashingly handsome man is. That is my dad. <laughs> he is an avid tennis player and very funny guy. In fact, he'd probably be probably the funniest person I know, and he'd be the first person to tell you that. He's always the life of the party. No matter where we are, he is the loudest person in the room. Only second to me. Well, sorry, he's second to me. Or I'm second to him, sorry. Um, <laughs> seven years ago, he was diagnosed with prostate cancer. Now, this was very, very difficult for me and my family. My dad was very young, so it was not something that we had been, we thought could be coming. And while I hope none of you share a similar story like this with me, chances are you probably do. One out of every four deaths in the United States today is cancer-related. And with people living longer and other diseases being eradicated, deaths related to cancer are only increasing. So I dealt with my dad's diagnosis like a true researcher. I wanted to find out everything I possibly could about cancer and all of his options for treatment. What I found was actually not very reassuring. What I found was the body is made up of millions of cells that go through a process called cell division, whereby they split into two and they regenerate themselves. Cancer is a mutation on this process, whereby it divides too quickly and the body cannot handle this. Now, the main treatment method that I found was chemotherapy, which I'm sure many of you have heard of. How chemotherapy works is by targeting cells while they're dividing and killing them during that process. So yes, chemotherapy does kill cancer cells, but all cells undergo the process of cell division. So it's not discriminatory towards cancer. It's like trying to imagine our body was a beautiful piece of lawn, and <laughs> cancer is a weed that is coming up, rapidly multiplying, and coming up into new areas, and we don't know how it's coming out. And chemotherapy is kind of like a pink spray paint bottle. And it's just trying to get this weed, but it kind of gets, gets the grass around it. So I've tried this before, and it's actually quite difficult. But is there anyone out here who wants to try this, maybe, for a demonstration? Yes. So all I want you to do, oh, man. Oh, thank you. <laughs> Technical difficulties. All okay. right. Just try and spray all of the weed, though. And Try not to get the grass if you can. It's quite difficult, as you can see. So for those of you who can't see in the back, she's trying to get as much of the weed as possible. Thanks, Michelle. <laughs> but it's OK. But a lot of the grass around it has been affected as well. So I thought to myself, this cannot be the best way to kill cancer cells. There must be a way that we can just target this weed and not kill the healthy cells around it. And so what I found was some of the researchers have kind of had similar ideas to me. Cancer has a protein that is overabundant on its surface called nucleolin. So we can use this to discriminate cancer cells from healthy cells. There is a drug, that, a DNA drug that has been synthesized that's sort of like a key that only fits into the lock that is nucleolin. So it can target cancer cells over healthy cells. So should I just stop my talk here because we found the cure to cancer? No, because this DNA drug actually disintegrates in the body and falls apart without any sort of structure attached to it. So what I'm working on is trying to figure out a way to get a vehicle or sort of like an armored car to get this DNA drug intact to where it needs to go to the cancer cells. And once it gets there, get inside the cancer cells and kill them. Enter. Gold nanostars. <laughs> Pretty cool, right? Um, so we attach this DNA drug to the outside of the nanostars. I know, pipe cleaners, very useful. But the, the code is actually still intact, so it can still find the cancer cells. So what's the other problem that we have? We need to release these drugs once it's in the cancer cells. So that's what I'm working on, making these stars so that it's the right material, size, and shape so that we can use light irradiation to remove these DNA drugs once they're in the cancer cells without harming the healthy cells. So luckily, my lab has kind of optimized this. We have created a bond between this DNA drug and the star 
through a gold sulfur bond, which is more like Velcro than superglue. So with a little bit of heat, we can actually remove them. So these gold nanostars are on the order of 50 nanometers. That's just ridiculously small. But if you lined them up, 2,000 of them, end to end, it would only be the width of a single piece of human hair. So how do you think something this small can affect so much change to something that's as large as cancer? It would be like if this entire room was a cancer cell, this would be, this actually would probably be bigger than a gold nanostar. So what can this do against a room this size? Well, most biological processes happen on the nano and micro level scale. How we digest food, how we breathe, how we fight off bacteria happen on the nano level. So it's imperative that we actually have something of this size. Furthermore, it's not just one of these nanostars against a cancerous tumor. It is an entire army of them. So this is just my research, finding a way to target cancer cells. And yes, we found a way that can target and fight cancer. But there are thousands of researchers across the globe figuring out ways to target cancer specifically. And there are even seven approved nanoparticle technologies by the FDA today. So I am trying to imagine this, this, this life, this possibility of life without chemotherapy. So trying to imagine a cancer diagnosis as not a death sentence, but rather a pesky weed to get rid of. Thank you. <laughs>